place all building propaganda tools in the incinerator chute in the sink. Especially those with funny pictures of me in them. Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. What? You did? Your survival, let alone success, barely registered in my projections. Now, all I need to do is check my transmission data bank. Mobius is always filling it up with his psychotic calls. Oh yes, there's the schematics, just like you said. How truthful. Yes, hmm, ah, uh, yes, 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 um, uh, hmm. No, I mean, yes, you just need to analyze these technologies for a moment. They are extremely advanced, you know? I know how these technologies work. Of course I know. 
If you remember, we described them in clearly abstract, contradictory statements before. Why would we do that if we weren't certain on... on how to use them? Yes, so let me... Hmm, a bit, huh? I'll figure it out. Yes, that's what I believe I said. I've got it. The cardiac regulator in the suit, the antenna for brain waves, and the sonic frequency for the vertebral nerves. I'm thinking. This is all very complicated. Let me check something. Of course, I have it. The override sequence to open the Forbidden Zone door is hidden in the schematics. Well, not hidden. It's actually right there, behind the programming equivalent of coffee stains. It's embedded in what seems to be recursive code. It's badly commented there and there. Oh, and null pointers. Very sloppy, Mobius. You see, using the antenna to boost the emitter's sonic frequency, and the stealth suit to bypass the Forbidden Zone lock, yes, that could work. Was that my plan? It must have been. Sometimes I truly surprise myself. The door is open, and now Mobius will get his. Heal you? What, put you back together like some giant hard-boiled yum-yum deviled egg? I mean, technically, these items could all be used to put you back together once you had your brain. But for now, they can be used in the name of aggression. The door should be unsealed. Now, instead of being subjected to threats, we can now send an equally threatening message to Mobius. And that message is science! Deliver this message, and Big Mountain shall be freed from Mobius' reign of terror! Um, you can go now. That's your cue. Might I be of service? Might I be of service? Might I be of service?
time to reward myself with a little refreshing benefit.
do require some addition and rightly might I be of service Might I be of service? Functionality restored. That's less than optimal. Oh, well, that's very sweet of you. Maybe one of these nights we can discuss theorems. Me too. Hope you can keep up. I work pretty fast. Here, something for you to brush up on. Dr. Mobius and I were deeply involved in research on the ability of light levels to enhance human cognition. We observed a fascinating phenomenon. Certain spectra of visible light actually increased cognitive function and reasoning ability. <laughs> of course, Dr. Mobius's brain is so big already, we had a hard time measuring it. As much as I'd love to, I'm afraid not. The data from that study has gone missing. You'll have to find a backup if you want to use the smart lights. Certainly. <laughs> I am online once again! Tremble world before my electric heating coil of doom! A toaster is just a death ray with a smaller power supply. As soon as I figure out how to tap into the main reactors, I will burn the world! Have you ever tried to indulge in all-consuming urge to kill when you don't have opposable thumbs? Or hands? Or anything other than a bread slot? You'd have a lot of pent-up anger, too. Buddy. If my heating element were just a little bigger, you'd be on fire right now! On fire! Well, since I can't kill you, I guess I have to listen to your inane questions. You should be afraid! I am the scourge of all small appliances, and the boogeyman that keeps lesser toasters awake at night! Not just murder! I tear them apart and render them down to their base components. Once their guts are spilled, you can do with them what you like. You want some weapon schematics? I can show you some fucking weapon schematics. You want a superheated Saturnite power fist? I can hook that shit up! You find one, you bring it on back here, 
and we'll burn this mother down! Like I said, break-
or hostiles. target detected.
triumphant triumph. See how I abstract my rage think tank? I hold you in such disdain, I generalize my hatred for you! Might I be of service, sir? You require some additional... What's the hat? Hi again, sweet. a damper on the toaster's mood. Oh well. No use crying over spilled Armageddon. Where was I? Oh right. Soon the world will burn in nuclear fire! Again! says she's all lies greetings citizen Require some addition. I smell sedition. I be of service.
Might I be of service?
This is a pre-recorded attack message indicating my desire to commit violence on you. Crush them with your pincers!
Forgive my confusion, so hard to tell these days. You seem familiar somehow. I'm guessing uh, you're here for your brain, perhaps? It's just up there. Uh, such a nice brain, young, very bright. A uh, little hard to see you. Uh, can you walk into my left, uh, right FOV cone? Ah, that's it. You're coming into focus nicely. Depth perception is a problem with this old monitor of mine. Went black a while ago. <laughs> that's old age for you. Should look at getting the visual nerves reattached. It's just that the right eye would see the wrong things. The <laughs> flying tortoises oh, were the worst. Would you care for a mentat? <sighs> I love mentats. Delicious and smarty. I have all sorts of amazingly science-horrific thoughts and ideas when those chalky tablets are zipping through my biogel. I forget them all not long after, though, especially with the data constipating my memory core. Afraid binary streams might shoot out my chassis. Had to start using the dome floor and walls here to inscribe equations. Although I've somewhat lost track of where they start and end. Really? That implies preconceived notions, theories, and a hypothesis about this meeting? Please extrapolate. What was I uh, supposed to be like? After all, it might be worth a cognitive realignment if your theoretical Mobius is better than I. Oh, a variety of raisins. You're something of a homily. The anomaly? You're really quite special, and not in the cranially challenged way. You see, you are the most successful brain extraction experiment ever performed here at Big Mountain. A victim of your own success, as it were. If you were to go back with what your brain knows about the procedure, well, your brain could be popped back in and you could walk right out of here. Can't have brains moving around of their own volition. I'm not sure, except that I'm sure there's a very good reason for it. I have very good reasons for almost everything I do. Even if I forget them occasionally. Although I feel this one is especially important. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, curiosity. I experienced that less now that I know everything. Oh, maybe it was when I found out some unpleasant answers. Mm hmm. Well, every scientist needs an army. Mine came to me after these rather large scorpions kept coming in from the desert, <laughs> like poisonous frosting. How scary, I thought. But they had survived when nothing else had. Perfect candidates for improvement as a reward for their tenacity. Then I thought, what if they shot energy bolts and acted as walking eyes and data-drained computers and acted as bullhorns? Then I made them bigger. Then I thought about... Custard. I do so love custard. Or oh, was it mustard? Mustard custard. Mm, I miss sugars and salts. I find things curious as well. Go on. 
Oh, I was probably tripping hard on Psycho when I sent that. Had to work myself up to it. Not usually violent. Except when I am. Then, <laughs> watch out! So many chems, such varieties. Whenever I take Mentats, I can feel my entire chassis breathe like a big spherical lung. <laughs> As for the Psycho, sometimes get the chem dispositories in my tank all switched up. Go in the wrong tube. Still, served its purpose. Did I? <laughs> Maybe I did. Can't have them leaving. Some reason for it. Ethics or, uh, mm, conscience? You and your brain are quite alike. I'm sure it knows the reasons better than I do. Dr. Mobius. Rather catchy, isn't it? It's my name, and my new name overwrote the old one. This name's as real as you or I. Although I believe your brain expressed similar incredulity at the nature of such an appellation. Someone's been watching too many old world science fiction movies, it said. I believe it meant me. I must admit I have a vulnerability for holotape fantasies of planets and robots and all that is forbidden. As for the name I was born with... Like the Think Tank, we were all reprogrammed to forget them, take on new names. It enforces the recursion loop in our perception programming. Now, trap is a rather harsh word, like excrement. Not an inappropriate word, but still rather harsh. But, yes, I did uh, take some liberties with their programming. It's all right, they don't remember. I certainly didn't until you said trap, and then I said excrement, and then... The radar fence to keep the think tank hemmed in wasn't really enough. They keep testing things. They would have found a way to disarm it. I suspect I have Plan 9s in place, but I may have coded myself to forget them, just in case. They're probably very dangerous, lethal, or worse. So I had to do something else to keep them occupied here. Or as you like to say, trapped. I prefer to have several Plan 9s in case the 7s fail. Dr. O, which is actually not his real name multiplied, since you can't multiply his real name in the first place. Ouroboros, Klein, they have all forgotten themselves, and not only themselves, but the world, sense of time and history. All that is left is what's here. I reprogrammed their chronometers, geometers, and cartography programs. This is now their world, here, Big Mountain. It was a merciful lobotomy, really, thinking back. They were my friends, but sometimes they would take things too far. And the world isn't ready for that kind of too-far thing-taking. That's my professional opinion, anyway. And I am told I was once <laughs> quiet professional. Well, it's simple. Despite their many failings, they are rather bright. They are the think tank for a reason. That I didn't change. Without something to distract them, make them afraid, they would simply deduce what had happened. 
And when they start deucing it up, then you came along, the final variable solved. They saw that their world was larger than they perceived. Bacteria finally able to see its host. There have been other visitors to make them doubt their perceptions, but you are the one who dialed back their monitor micromagnifiers. You were irrefutable proof that there was a world outside. And then there was the whole brain fiasco, which forced me to take steps. See, your brain had a special kind of uh, a wrinkle, a uniquity that they had never thought to try in all their countless escape attempts. Yes, very good. I should have Mentats in just you instead of the other way around. Hmm, Mentats? In any event, you showed up at the think tank, and because you had suffered a cranial injury in just the right place, bullets in the head are usually much more fatal, and yours was a light case of bullet headitis. But it was enough for the autodoc in the sink to change its programming to fix the problem, and the brain extraction technology for once worked. That gave the think tank the knowledge its brains shouldn't, uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't possess. With that knowledge, the procedure can be reversed. If they obtain that procedural data, they can use it to mush and modify their cranial selves into hosts to slip past the radar fence. I'm sure of it. And once they're off the reservation... Uh, not much, except they contaminated Big Mountain and installed new ideas in the think tank. One caused a great deal of infrastructure damage with his brain and smartiness. Ruthless, that one, played a little rough with the trains. But the last one was the most dangerous. Him uh, slipping away. That was almost as bad as the think tank escaping. Yes, I certainly wouldn't loop it on purpose. Purpose? Purpose? I am far too sophisticated to make such a childish error, error, error. Yes, yes, this is... Oh, I tried that already. Might have contributed to the problem, now that I rethink it. But thank you for asking before trying it. Now, that seems to be rather hormonal of you. Flight or fight response, you know. Hard to cut that out completely. Your brain is here, safe with me. We chat over Mentats. Do you? You seem fine without it. And does it even want to go back with you? Maybe you should ask it. It's quite independent, has all manner of opinions. Tell you what, I'll leave it up to your brain. If it wants to go, then fine. If not, well, you should respect its wishes. Indeed, the uh, goodbye part of our little chat then. Uh, goodbye, uh, please mind the equations on the floor.
I do so love integers.
of floor space for my calculations. finally dragged themselves in out of the wasteland. And where have we been, hmm? Crawling through pits of radioactive muck again? Ah, lovely. Figure that out, have we? Would you like a cookie? After the think tank extracted me from your skull, they fell to bickering amongst themselves. I'm sad to say we were quite forgotten about. Dr. Mobius saw an opportunity to gain some leverage and had me spirited away to his dome. I don't know. I'm afraid the trauma of our separation rendered me quite insensate. I didn't come around until I was safely ensconced in this tank. I'm quite sure whatever he did was highly scientific, though. Hardly. Dr. Mobius keeps a close optical sensor on the goings-on at the think tank. As soon as he saw the opportunity, he took it. Well, as long as your curiosity is satisfied. Well, that's a fine how-do-you-do. Me! A, uh, quote, dick, unquote. As if I'm the one responsible for the way you carry on gadding about the wastes. I'm not the one that makes us clamber around technus-infested ancient vaults or go charging off to New Vegas on missions of ill-conceived revenge. And have we forgotten who got us shot in the head and buried in a shallow grave? Hmm? Do you think I enjoy that little moment? Well, maybe next time you hear me telling you that charging a knifekin with a penknife is a bad idea, you listen. I'm not going to lie to you. The prospect is definitely not that appealing. Look at it from my perspective. Here I have peace, quiet, and safety. Well, barring the odd rogue scorpion. In your head, I've got poison, radiation, grisly injuries, and biological functions. Do you know how much more you can get done when you're not constantly looking for places to urinate? It's quite a lot, I can tell you. If you want me back, we need to establish some ground rules. First, showers! Second, regular checkups. Regular, mind you, and from a reputable doctor. That Julie Farkas woman, for example, she seems to know a thing or two. Third, you need to listen to me more than your hormonal choir and genitalian orchestra. Promise me that, and you've got a deal. Really? Hmm. I didn't expect you to actually agree to that. I'm afraid that was a bit of a bluff, really. I'm not going with you. 
Well, certainly there might be some things I miss about being ambulatory. We have seen some incredible sights, haven't we? Jason Bright and his followers launching into the vast unknown. Helios One coming back online. But still, given the tremendous, potentially life-ending peril that went along with those... Yes, yes, I'd rather stay here. Hmm, I suppose you're right. That does call certain assumptions into question, doesn't it? Indeed, quite the conundrum. How do you suppose we resolve it? I suppose there might be some advantage to that, yes. There's a chance that the reintegration would create some improved synergy between us. Well, I suppose you've convinced me well enough. I'll rejoin your body if that's your final decision. Unfortunately, before we get to that stage of the proceedings, we have a problem. Even if I could settle myself back in your skull and reconnect all those pesky nerve endings, Dr. Mobius doesn't have the tools here. We would have to make use of Dr. Klein's lab, and I rather doubt the brains are inclined to share. Oh, lovely. We've reached the mindless violence portion of the program. Tell me, what exactly are you, and I use the word loosely, planning? With an attitude like that, it's small wonder you got yourself shot in the head! I'd like to find a nice little place to live, maybe in Good Springs, and settle down where we won't get shot at. Not as often, at any rate. But since that doesn't seem likely, what's your plan? Right! Look out, Think Tank! This brain is coming out of its jar! I suppose now that we're reunited, you'll want to fill your torso up with those other meaty parts the Think Tank took from us. Personally, I think your upgrades are quite a bit better. But now that I'm with you, the Sync's Autodoc can plug them back in no problem. Right then, off we go. Clyde will be in for a nasty shock when he realizes the pacification field won't work on a mind and body reunited. I see you and your brain reached a compromise. How pleasant. I hypothesize after the indignant frequencies my receptors had uh, recepted, such a partnership-based conclusion would be low on the likely scale. Why, of course you can. I am well versed in the science of sharing. Well, when not chemmed out of my sphere. If I recall, I had a plan that was working, or whatever it was. I don't think it reached fruition. I would recall fruit if it had happened. I wasn't trying to kill them, just keep them out of trouble. What was that plan? Blast. I probably uh, wrote it down on the floor somewhere. That will be difficult. It would be like fighting five scaled-down versions of me that have better depth perception. And they have an arsenal of vivisectors, brain eel beams, and a rather nasty 
ray that can make your atoms do a happy dance. If you could survive those highly improbable odds and ends, then deceasing them is definitely an option. Although, I doubt killing them would do anything except make you feel better. Or let you brag to other humans about your primal violentness. Something ingenious and needlessly complicated, I expect. I may have already told you and forgotten it. I forgot I had forgotten pencils until one day I found one. Spent days studying its purpose before my memory circuit kicked in. Felt quiet silly. Well, you could try and appeal to their humanity. <laughs> That's a tired cliché. And really, when they were humans, they weren't very good humans. Well, there's many things they have forgotten, sitting in their bowls. Friendship, the thrill of discovery. Love, masturbation, the usual. Much like your brain, I am certain there is something you can spark within each of them. Memories, hormones. A wise man once said, the eyes do more than see. Make them see, if you can. Or if not, you can always make them succumb to fear. <laughs> it certainly worked for me, for a time. Then you came along, and bravery and or desperation trumped that little idea. Back to the drawing board, I suppose. Or is this the end? Hard to tell. Oh, tell them I'm still alive. We had a nice chat, and we agree on a few things. That's true, isn't it? Or... You could kill me and lie about it. Either way, it would be interesting. And if you are partial to lying and deception, well, you could tell them a ludicrous lie. The more over the top, the better. That's my experience. They're more than a little gullible. Better make it convincing, though. Or it'll be the dissection table and vivisectors for you. And if you speak of me, please try and make me look good. I am Dr. Mobius, after all, not some lab assistant teacher's aide. Might I be of service?
Might I be of service? Might I be of service? Might I be of service? That you require some addition. 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 You require some additional... Finds an impatient man. With you sure? Yeah, they were. The lobotomite returns. Our lobotomite. Has Dr. Mobius been denominated into scrap metal and voice module parts as we hope? I recommend watching your tone with me, Lobotomite. Now, your brain. Hand it over, or we'll extract it again.
And what could we possibly have to speak about? You have the brain, we have the technology. All you must do is surrender. With it, we can finally leave this place. I cannot tell you how boring this place gets, chopping up the landscape and everything in it. And we have so many questions to ask your brain first. About this Mojave place. A fertile testing ground for our experiments. That is the most insane thing I've ever heard. There's no way Mobius would condescend to step inside you. Besides, there's no way such a thing could be accomplished. It's impossible. You speak the truth, and the decibel variation in your voice. It is Mobius. How dare you breach the sink tank? And what do you want here? That's no deal at all! There's a whole world beyond the crater, filled with ideas and possibilities! We could have escaped, seen it all for ourselves, tested it, prodded at it, made it squirm. For you? And for science? I have a strange sensation that I would like that. How odd. Very well, partner. The think tank is at your service as long as you do not destroy us. As it had been in the years before the Great War, Big Mountain, the Big Empty, became home to one of the brightest minds of the 23rd century. The Courier watched over the Big Empty for years to come, caring for it and keeping its discoveries safe until they were needed to help others. Which had always been Big Mountain's purpose. Past the laboratories and science, it had always been intended as a place to build the future of all mankind. Although, truth be told, the courier had barely explored the crater in an attempt to rush through and be done with the whole thing. Perhaps that was for the best, however. Curiosity, while sometimes rewarded for its efforts, often proves to be equally dangerous. Dr. Mobius continued his research undisturbed in the Forbidden Zone. As much as he had attempted to create better scorpions, he tried the same with humanity, with considerably less success. These failures didn't bother him over much. Once the rush of Mentats wore off, he forgot he had failed in any event. After all, the bright young mind who had come to visit him in the Forbidden Zone had already exceeded his expectations. The sink atop the dome bustled with the voices of a small town, constantly chirping, arguing, and snarling at each other. Still, this all happened productively in the interests of its new owner. The sink Central Intelligence Unit discovered, despite its inversion code, it was comforted by the sense of community the other personalities gave it. The biological research station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, requested a transfer to the X-22 Botanical Garden. So that it might, in its own words, sensually fertilize the garden's smooth contours. The garden sent back a polite refusal, saying it had prior commitments with a vault it had helped infect before the war. The book shoot continued to devour all seditious materials until it nearly choked on a paperclip. It adamantly maintained it was a Chinese paperclip. 
and the whole thing had been an elaborately orchestrated assassination attempt. Whatever the reason, it slowed down for a while, carefully appraising each document and clipboard that came to it. The light switches continued to bicker and flicker. This persisted until the day someone dropped a flashlight in the sink, and the two of them united in their hatred of the showboat. The scene continued to ruthlessly scrub any particulate matter that came near it. Eventually, it gained access to the Magneto Hydraulics plant and nearly flooded all the big empty in an attempt to scrub the crater clean. The toaster continued its psychotic spree, reducing all appliances in range to scrap electronics and spare parts. After one of its more psychotic episodes, however, the other sink personalities decided enough was enough and dumped the toaster in a bathtub. Sparking and hissing, the toaster swore its enemies would rue the day when they had bread and no way to toast it. Muggy did his best to collect coffee cups, although in his quest, he accidentally trapped himself in Higgs Village. It might have been the end for poor Muggy, except he found it peaceful there tidying up the kitchens of the think tank professors back when they had been flesh and bone. Well, except for Dr. O1, who was an asshole for having created Muggy in the first place. Muggy left O's house deliberately dirty, punishing the dishes and cups that lived there in blind revenge for serving Dr. O. Blind O Jefferson eventually discovered a new sound. Silence. It only made him more filled with the blues than before. It was rumored by the other personalities that he had a brief fling with the light switches. Although he forgot their names once too often and was soon left in the dark as punishment. Autodoc, always gentle and methodical, kept sewing up the courier in all the right places when the skin split open from repeated wear and tear. The Autodoc was just glad to have purpose again. It heard its simpler brothers and sisters who got shipped to the Sierra Madre bored out of their skulls in that toxic dead city. In time, the Autodoc found a way to deactivate the Y-17 trauma harnesses releasing the corpses they had held prisoner for almost 200 years. As the courier ran through the X-8 facility multiple times, the computers analyzed the test subject's movements. Rather than performing a superficial observation, they realized the subject barely knew what communism was, or even what a high school was. This confused them for a time until the facility finally realized that its research had succeeded. So it let its cyber dogs out into the wastes to help protect small communities from physical aggression rather than communist propaganda. The infiltration program in X-13 felt spent, having repeatedly upgraded the stealth suit until it could upgrade it no more. It felt warm fulfilled, and a bit sluggish. It realized not long after, the stealth suit had left it without so much as a note on the nightstand. So the infiltration program sent out robo-brains into the wastes, looking for its wayward technology. It eventually found Repcon HQ and set up a new research center, testing and murdering fiends who kept breaking into the facility. The courier, organs intact, continued onwards, a little less heavy of step, but with all the organs in the right places, as they should be. After all, brains can develop a life of their own when left to their own thoughts, and the courier's brain was more clever than most. Dr. Klein and the think tank remained alive, unaware of the world outside. They looped through their daily routine, none the wiser about the world beyond. Although perhaps wiser was the wrong word. The world outside belonged to the courier, 
and if anyone would shape it, well, the courier had already called dibs. There is an expression in the wasteland, old world blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past, they can't see the present, much less the future, for what it is. They stare into the what was, eyes like pilot lights, guttering and spent, as the realities of their world continue on around them. Science is a long, steady progression into the future. What may seem a sudden event often isn't felt for years, even centuries to come. In the times following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, however, Old World Blues took on a new meaning. Where once it was viewed as a form of sadness, nostalgia, it became an expression describing the potential for the future. It can be easy to see science as evil, technology unchecked as the source of all ills, all misfortunes. With the courier at the helm, science became a beacon for the future. There was old world blues, and new world hope, and hope ruled the day at Big Mountain. We could say more, but the stories in the Big Empty speak for themselves. Now armed with the transportal ponder, the courier could return to the dome at any time and crack open the secrets of the Big Empty one by one. The sink sat vigilant, waiting for its master to return, shoes covered in Mojave dust. Only one road yet remained, and it was one the courier had to walk alone.
Might I be safe in the assumption that matters with the think tank had been satisfactorily computed vis-a-vis -vis your residence in this domicile? Will Sir be staying for any- I trust matters regarding your-